Hello class, good day. So today we're going to discuss about some bedroom design fundamentals. I think this, should, this is. Uh, I think this video will be really useful when you'll be doing uh, your activity on bedroom design. February is bedroom month, and this is week three, and we're going to be looking at the slow hole principle of the hockey area. Yeah, the slow hole principle for bedrooms is one of our 12 steps to a slow hole. And we're going to look at number nine, and the principle reads that all bedrooms. Okay, so I think they discussed that all bedrooms in a slow home should have good daylight. Sufficient storage, a logical space for the bed, and enough room for circulation. So, when you design your bedrooms class, it is important that you must make sure that your bedroom should have enough uh, lighting coming in, natural lighting coming in. Okay. In the Philippine context class, when you design your bedrooms, you must make sure that uh, they are designed in such a way that when your uh, user wakes up in the morning, he can see the morning sun. But he, uh, he will be avoiding the heat of the afternoon sun. So it's important that you know the orientation of the bedroom. Okay. So when you design your bedroom, make sure that uh, uh, it is facing in a direction which is not very hot in the afternoon. And it should have a good view or vista. So hence... I think when you design high-end uh, residential buildings, their bedroom should face something, uh, a view of the ocean, perhaps a view of the pool or a view of the garden. Okay, now let's continue. In a slow home, the daylight, sufficient storage, a logical place for the bed, which we will talk about in a little bit because that's really important, and a number for circulation. Before we get to the logical place for the bed, I want to talk about the first one. Like, that's, that's not something that we really need to draw, but it is a really important principle. You want to have a well-sized window, and you want to have a bedroom that doesn't face the side yard. If you've got a room that faces the front and the back yard, then it can really have a large window that will have good view. If you've got a side yard window, you're restricted from a fireproof point of view, you have a very small window, and you're going to be looking at another house about eight feet away. Yeah, yeah, to demonstrate these principles, we thought we would look at the floor plan or case study has some detail. We'll look at the non -negative. Okay, so let's, let's review the floor plan that they presented. Okay, so what do you think makes this room great? So basically, class, I think this house is based on the um, American setting or European setting in terms of design. But uh, the design principles. It's uh, almost, uh, it's what you call this, the design principles in bedroom planning, it follows the same logical steps, whatever the location may be. So even if uh, we are in the Philippines and you have different weather, how they design uh, their spaces in the States could be applied here, but when you design here, you should apply the weather conditions, okay? So what makes this uh, floor plan uh, good? Okay, look at it closely, class. Plan. Okay, let's begin with the master bedroom. Okay, if you go inside the master bedroom, okay, you can see that there's a uh, space for a. This could be a uh, king or queen size bed, and then there's a space for the lampshades. Okay, then you get inside. Here you have two lavatories. Usually, class um, clients prefer to have their own separate lavatories. Okay, so that the husband or the wife, when they wake up in the morning, uh, especially when they are working and they are very busy, they won't uh, uh, fall in line, have a long queue here. Okay, so when you get inside, this one, here is your toilet. But in the Philippine context class, this toilet should be placed nearer here to have a natural uh, ventilation for it. Okay, so that's like how you're going to apply. 
Okay. In the States, it's okay because they're using a lot of um, artificial ventilation technologies in their buildings. But here in the Philippines, we are in a tropical setting. The cost of electricity is high. I think you should consider um, placing a, uh, placing your toilet in a location which has a which has its own ventilation. Okay. So notice class in the design of this one, the design of the toilet, is that it, it's separate. So the shower area is separate, the bathtub area is separate, the toilet area is separate, lavatories are separate, the walk-in closet is separate. So what's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is that if someone wants to use the toilet, you don't need to close the entire uh, master toilet for privacy okay so you want to use the toilet here you just have to close this then the next person can take a shower with the person doing his business inside here so that's the reason for that okay notice that there's also an ample space for the closet okay so that's something that most uh, families want you no know? They want to have a large area for their closets. So that's how you plan your master bedroom. Okay, then you have a small area here for the family. Okay, then and you can notice class how, uh, how private the design is. Okay, so when you get here, it's not, uh, it's not something that could be accessed publicly. Okay, so it could be closed. So you notice here there's a sliding door. So these two bedrooms have their own privacy also. But since these are just uh, normal bedrooms, they have to share their own toilet and uh, shower. Okay. Then I think uh, one of the good context the design for the bedrooms is the closet notice that instead of placing the closet here the the design is that the closet here is embedded so this means that there's enough circulatory space so this entire square area it's going to be utilized for the circulation of the bedroom so it's going to feel rather spacious okay and notice also the large windows this is really important. The master bedroom, the secondary bedroom, is because there's some really important design considerations. This is a narrow box house, okay? So typically in narrow box houses, a lot of times the secondary bedroom, at least one of them, is in a side room. The way we've detailed this, both bedrooms have large windows which face into the backyard. And that's really, really important. Yeah, and another thing that this house doesn't have, it doesn't have one of those closets that come out here into the house, which is one of my pet peeves. Your personal 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 But look at the alternative. This is, look at how simple this is and what a difference it makes to the room. If you just embed the closet into the architecture, it just disappears. And what you get as a result is a nice rectangular shaped room. It's easy. Okay, so like what I've said. So you get a nice rectangular shaped room here. It's this thing from your closet. It's making this, this space will uh, certainly feel a large. Yeah. So, so I want to also talk about, about the master bedroom a little bit, bit and the details of that. that. Now, now the master bedroom bed is slightly bigger, bigger than the other bedrooms, which may kind of be but not too big. big. Not, not too big. big. We, we have, have a king bed, bed. and this, this goes back, back to the idea of a logical place for the bed. This bed is centered in the room, and it has a natural place because of the corner we know it wants to be there. We built this asymmetrical headboard, which comes to the end. There's enough room for so, if you design a bedroom uh, like this class in the Philippines, its significance in the center is that when you place your steep pipe air conditioning here, it's going to be at the top. Okay, then the condensing unit will be outside. So, when you get in, it won't look out of place. Okay. So when you design your bedrooms, you have to consider how the utilities also will affect its uh, design.
So that's why when you design your bedrooms, it's much better if it could be symmetrical. Okay? That would be much more manageable and easier. For a night table on either side, good circulation space, but then the proportion from the foot of the bed to this wall is enough to allow for this piece of furniture to fit properly and still have circulation between the edge of the furniture and the foot of the bed. I, I, I do, do want, want to take a couple minutes and talk about the master bathroom. bathroom. I know no, that's not something we really want to talk about this month, but, but right, right now, now let's just talk about that. that. And one of the principles that we try to do wherever possible, possible, not always possible, possible is to have a single entry into that whole suite of rooms so that someone, someone can come in, they can get ready, they can get dressed, and then they can leave without having to traverse back and forth through that bedroom. Okay, so like what I've said last. The reason why there's a separate door here for your toilet and a separate door for your closet is that when somebody uses the toilet, he or she doesn't have to close the entire section here. You need to have privacy. So you can just close the toilet or you can just close the shower. Then the next person can use the lavatory or the walk-in closet. Okay, but one thing last uh, you must remember uh, in your design is that there should be a line here. Okay, this means that your math master bathroom is should be lower in level compared to your master bedroom. Okay, so that's why there's a line here to indicate that uh, it's going to be a separate space. Then it's going to be lower than the level of the master bedroom. The purpose of that is that when, uh, for example, there's some water here. Uh, there's some problem with the leak, uh, water leaks, it won't spill into the master bedroom. So it's the elevation of your toilets, it should be lower. Okay, so that's something that you must consider in your uh, design. Always remember, class, that when you design, every line has a meaning and a purpose. So I'm showing you this video to look into how they use the proportions, the sizes, common sizes of the beds, to design their bedrooms, so that's how uh, that's how ergonometrics affect the design of spaces. So you won't design something that is too big, you won't design something that is too small. Not, Not only is it more convenient if someone, someone has to try to sleep in the room while getting ready, ready, it, it also reduces the number of doors by one, one, so that it increases the wall area for furniture. Good point. So, so in the next, next episode, episode, we're going to zoom in in more detail. detail. Okay, so I think that's the end of your video. So those are basic uh, bedroom design fundamentals. So don't forget to, I think you can search their uh, videos here in YouTube. Okay, and, uh, just uh, search bedroom design fundamentals. You can find the original link for this uh, video class. Okay, so if you have any questions less on how to design your bedroom, don't hesitate to uh, give me an email or a PM in my messenger on Facebook. Okay, don't forget that when you design bedrooms, your primary concern is privacy, sufficient ventilation, and sufficient lighting. Then also nice views. So in the hierarchy of bedrooms class, the master bedroom should get the best view. And but doesn't mean that the bedrooms two and three shouldn't get views also. Okay. So when you design your spaces, make sure that all the bedrooms they have a good view of something. Okay, so when you design a house, you study the house in the context of its environment and surrounding community. Okay, so that's the purpose. Your purpose is an architect. Okay, so that's our lesson for this week, class. I hope that uh, this video can enlighten you in how to design your sleeping areas. Okay, so always remember, like what I've said before, what you draw, class, in uh, your plans, everything has a meaning and a purpose. Okay, so stay safe and see you next week.